Okay, today I'm going to do an acrylic pour. I'm going to do a flip cup. I've got a 12 by 12 canvas and I put gesso on it. Uh, it already had gesso where it was already primed, I guess, but I put a coat of gesso on it and let it dry for an hour and I sanded it down, uh, especially around the corners and stuff. Some of these that I've done before, I have issues with the corners not covering good, so I'm going to see if the gesso helps that. Uh, I'm still relatively new at this, so I'm learning as I go. So what I'm going to do today is I've got 3 ounce cups, 5 ounce cups, and what I'm going to do, I'm trying a new recipe, but I'm going to do it by weight. And the reason that I'm going to do it by weight, I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit. The reason I'm doing it by weight is it'll be easier for me to replicate. If I get a formula that I really like, it'll be easier to replicate it because I know what the weights are as opposed to, you know, if you're just going volume, you know, you're all right, going to here, going to here, you're really eyeing it in. Weight's pretty precise. So, and I'm going to go pretty much a two to one with the flow troll, two, two parts flow troll and one part glue. And I just got the Amazon basic school glue. I've done some research on that and I don't really know there's going to be a lot of difference in the type glues. And then, uh, I'll do, use a little bit of distilled water. I got distilled water in here. So I'm going to start out and I'm going to do three different colors. I didn't have a red red. I have this, it's a bright magneta or magenta. Sorry, I always want to call that magneta. Bright magenta and then a deep blue and the yellow. And then I'm going to use some white too. I've got a, uh, uh, a big bottle of white because I go through a lot of white. And I'm also going to flood coat. I'm going to flood coat the canvas with the white first too. That's something I haven't tried before, but I think that'll help me out a little bit. So I'm going to start out. I'm going to turn my scale on. Hopefully you can see the scale numbers on here. I'm going to go to grams. And so I'm going to put what I'm guessing is about two-thirds. Okay, that's 31 grams. So let's call it 30 grams. So I want to go, and I'll put the glue into a little smaller bottle just to make it easier. So I want to go 30 grams of that, 31, that's close enough, let's call it 30. And then with glue, I'm going to put another 15 grams. Should take me to 45 grams. 46, so that's still pretty close. And then on the water, now I'm going to, before I put water in, I'm going to go ahead and put one of my colors in. So I'm going to start out with the yellow and let's go 5 grams. I was at 46. So I'm going to go 5 grams of the yellow and then let's go, you know, the water, I don't think I'm going to measure the water. Let's see if that, how well that colors. I may need to go heavier on the color. That looks pretty true to color. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with the 5 grams on the paint. So I've got uh, 30 grams of Floetrol, 15 grams of glue, 5 grams of paint. And that's pretty fluid. Probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go uh, five grams of water. I'm going to go slow with that though. Now I take that back. That's two grams of water. Okay, I'm not going to do any more water. I'm going to go with that. So there's my yellow. So I'm going to go and do the same thing and I'll fast forward through this next part mixing the next two colors because it's basically going to be the same thing. So from this point on I'm going to fast forward. I'm going to zero my scale back out.
Okay, I'm going with a bigger cup here and I'm going to do the white because I'm going to use the white as a flood coat and then I'll mix a little bit of whatever's left of the white into my regular mix. So I'm going to tear that back down to zero. Back on milligrams. Okay, so I'm going to go, I did 30, so I'm going to do, I'm going to see if I can get uh, 50 in this cup. Hopefully this cup's big enough. Oh, well, I went over it again. i got to start getting more careful on how I pour my flow troll. So this is going to be almost double. So now I'm going to go 25, so i got 50 of the flow troll. So I'm going to go 25 of the glue. I went a little heavy on the glue, but that's okay. And then I'm going to go with a white paint. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just double that and go 10 with a white color. Because it's white. It's going to be the same color as everything else. So we're going to take that up to 80. I'm sorry, up to 90. With a white. And then we're going to add, we'll go ahead and double. I want this to flow pretty good, so we're going to go up to... Uh, four ounces, or four grams, sorry, of water. Now, once I get this mixed up, I'm going to examine my mixes and decide, I'm going to get rid of the scale now. So I'm going to examine my mixes and see if they look pretty close as far as how fluid they are and then I can add or add a little bit of water if I need to that's pretty fluid that's pretty fluid That's pretty fluid too. And the white is a little bit thicker, but I want that to kind of sit on top of my canvas because I'm going to pour on top of that. So, okay, so I got all my paints mixed now. Got our three colors and then our white base coat, and then I'm going to mix a little bit of the white in with it too. So I'm going to reset up and get my uh, canvas ready. And we'll do the white coat on the base first, or onto the canvas first, and then we'll start adding the colors. Okay, I got everything set up. I got my colors mixed up. I got my white base coat mixed up. And I, I wanted a squeegee thing to help do this with, but I couldn't find it. So I'm going to use a foam brush for this time, which will be fine. So basically, what I've run into before, when I do the colors, and you start trying to run it over, it doesn't want to run over the corner is very good because it, it seems to stick over the dry parts. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to coat the whole thing in white first, give me a good base coat, and then hopefully that will make my flow better when I start tilting the canvas. I'm really not sure how far that's going to go, so I'm going to start with that. And I just want a nice flat. Oh yeah, that was plenty. I said I've only done a handful of these so far. I've been watching other people on YouTube, of course, learning to do it, and uh, I love all kinds of art, so some I've been interested in doing. I'm going to eventually do some epoxy pours, too, some epoxy uh, canvas pours. So that's pretty good right there. Now I just need to get it, get on the sides and on the corners good. That's so far that's what I've found, the ones that I've done, that's where my issues end up being, is I end up not having enough for what I want on the uh, on the sides. Now I know the sides really aren't as critical. 
and I am going to walk around on the opposite side to look at that. I'm just grabbing a little bit of this extra paint and I got push pins underneath my thing to lift it up off the table in case you were wondering. I put push pins in corners. Uh, the first couple I did I, I, I leveled them out with a level and honestly I don't know that it was that critical. I didn't do it on this one so I guess I'll find out if my board looks all uneven afterwards. Okay, so I got all my corners covered. So I'm just going to kind of flatten this out a little bit. Get around all my edges good. Edges are your problems. And this should, once I quit messing with it, it should flow and level itself out pretty good. Okay. Now I'm going to pause my video right here because the one thing I did not get is I got a heat gun for bubbles. So I'm going to go grab my heat gun and uh, so I can get some of these bubbles out. This is my new heat gun I just got off Amazon. It's got multiple speeds and you can adjust temperature. So anyway, I'm just going to go over this real light. I don't really want to dry this. I just want to make sure there's no bubbles in it. Looks like most of them popped on their own, but I still want to hit it anyway. Okay, so I've got that done. I'm going to take this and slide it up out of the way just a little bit and we're going to mix our paint together. So I've got this is a little measuring cup. It's off Amazon too. Any of this stuff that I use, if I got it on Amazon, I'll have links down in my description. If you want to go down there and look at it, some of it you can find at you know, your local home improvement store or your super stores or whatever. But Okay, so Okay, so let's go. We're going to pour a little bit of our red in. Maybe about half of it. We don't have a lot of white left. I'm going to pour a little bit of white down the side there. I'm going to pour about half of our blue in. And see I'm pouring down the side and it helps keep the paint separated a little bit. About half our yellow in. We'll go a little bit more white. And the one thing I'm not good at yet on this, obviously, is judging how much uh, paint I need. So I'll be able to Make a judge. This is a 12 by 12. I'm going to mix my colors a little different this time. This is a 12 by 12 canvas. And I know about approximately, I'll be able to calculate approximately how much paint I mixed. So I'll be able to come back and judge whether I need to, you know, make more paint or less paint. Hopefully I don't need more because I don't want to have to start over. Go red, then yellow. I just touched my canvas. That's all my white. I've got a lot of blue left still. I'm getting some nice rings in there. That's going to look cool, I think. Now, silicone. People talk about using silicone. I have not used any silicone in this yet. I have some silicone, some liquid silicone, and that's going to be probably my next pour. I'm going to see what kind of cells I get with this flow trawl. Okay, that's about it. Okay, so that is very fluid. I hope it's not too wet, but it, it I mean, it looks cool. So, what we're going to do now. I'm going to bring this up. It's going to be hard to do with it being wet. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just flip it over on top of my cup. Close as I can get it to the middle. Get all the excess paint off my hands. I 
you already see it's running under the white a little bit. So I'm going to give that a minute. Get that centered up good. I'm going to give that just a second to let all my paints run down and Joe, look at the cells I'm getting out of that. That's crazy. I'll zoom in on that a little bit later. That's some crazy looking cells right there and that's with with uh, no silicone. That's just from having the flow trawl in there. So, so far that's pretty cool looking. So I'm going to get some of this other stuff out of the way and then Okay, and maybe I should have leveled it. That is really cool. So I'm going to get it to every edge first. This is the hardest part of this. Mixing up the paint and pouring it on there, that's not that big a deal. Getting it to cover the whole board, that's a little trickier. That's one little trick. Just to get that to start flowing and then it'll kind of go on its own. Like I said corners are one of the hardest parts. So once you get it, if you just touch it a little bit early on, get it on those corners, and once it's got that little bit of paint on it, I got a I got a glob of some kind right here. I need to get that out. That should fix itself early enough in the game. Okay, I'm going to go around on the other side. Oh, and I've got some, well, it's good I went on the other side because I, I got some places that I still missed over here. Touch that and that'll let that flow into that. I got a glob. I thought I saw a glob when I was pouring that. That's a glob of my paint color, that magenta. I got it out okay. As long as you catch them early, you can still take stuff like that out. So I'm going to. Anywhere it's not covering. That'll help that flow to those areas. You see how once once I touch it, get a little bit of paint on it, that paint will gravitate to it. And I got another something. Pretty forgiving at this point. Okay, so let me check and make sure that side is good. And I'm gonna come back. I need to. Uh, I probably should be gripping that for more from the bottom side, so I don't mess up my corners. See if I still got enough movement there. There we go. And then one more corner over there. And I did a lot of movement. 
and I busted up a lot of those cells that I had earlier. And that's one of the things that I still need to work on. And you know, if you watch any of my other videos, I do, I do Lichtenberg burning and I do woodworking stuff. In all my videos, I'm, uh, I like to, to, I'm not going to say teach, but I like my videos to be somewhat instructional. And within that, I'm not perfect, and I'm going to make mistakes, but I do stuff over and over again, and I love experimenting. And I will experiment and figure out ways to fix something that I'm not good at. And so, if you keep watching my videos, you can learn that along with me. And I take suggestions all the time. I've had tons of people come in. All right, let's go with a heat gun. Had a lot of people come in and I can push some of this stuff where I got corners. And the theory with a heat gun is it brings cells up. And it's not going to do it as much. It is actually bringing quite a few up. It's not going to do it as much without the silicone. The silicone really, really does that. But it is bringing up a lot of little tiny cells. And the reason I got this heat gun, for that reason out there, a lot of heat guns don't have any force behind them. This one, if I just want the heat, I can leave it on a low setting. But this one also has a high setting. So if I need to push some paint around with it, I can. So that's bringing out a lot of little cells. A lot of people use torches. Uh, I'm sure the torches are fine. I've used a heat gun a lot on a lot of different things, a lot of epoxy work. I'm comfortable with a heat gun, so that's what I'm using. And I think you either want to do the same. Okay. I'll zoom in just a little bit. I would call that a pretty good pour. So we're going to let it set up and see how the, uh, and I'll probably come back and put some sticks under that side and level that out just a little bit so I don't have heavier paint on that side than on this side because it will continue to run a little bit till it dries. So I'll probably come in and try and level that and that's something I will do on my next one again is I will level my canvas before I start pouring. Anyway, uh, that's it. I appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe and uh, keep watching. I'm going to do a lot of these, so we'll learn together on them. I appreciate you watching. Bye.